All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 537 of the First and Primary Show. I am VF Ball over here. We talk about George Southern Atlanta Falcons football. Uh, I want to give you guys a lot of um, thanks and um, appreciation for the feedback from the last, you know, episode, because I know in here it sounds crazy. I hear it bouncing off the walls. I do have some sound panels coming in. And um, they should be here by, uh, I will say, Wednesday or whatever. So hopefully I have some of them set up so it will actually help with the sound. It's, it's all a part of a process when you're moving. And, and um, I didn't get the sound panels from my other, you know, my other house. So um, I didn't think it was going to be this bad, but I guess I should have known better. But nevertheless, we're going to keep rocking and rolling. So hopefully... You know, you guys can, you know, continue to bear with me while I get the audio side a little bit better. Nevertheless, um, we're going to keep on rocking and rolling with the Falcons. We're going to talk about our rivals, and uh, we're just going to go along with what's going on in the offseason. If this is your first time here, welcome. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Uh, you can listen to the show at your leisure on any of those avenues. Um, so I actually, you know, advise you to, to subscribe to more than one. There could be instances where some episodes may not show up on the YouTube side or the Rumble side, but it'll be on the podcast side and vice versa. So if you want the content, it's best to just have extra avenues just in case. But I appreciate the support and uh, I cannot thank you guys enough. So let's go ahead and get into this. What do I mean about acknowledging your rivals? Don't fear them. We all know what's going on with these, with all our rivals in the NFC South. I mean, you got to think about it when it comes to the Falcons, you know, the Saints, obviously the Panthers and the Bucks. To some extent, all three of those teams are our rivals. We beat up on each other every year, and it can be a nightmare trying to get out of the division. The Saints just got finished signing Derek Carr to a four-year deal, just like the whole situation with Julio Jones when he got signed. I don't care. I don't care that Tom Brady got Julio Jones, and I don't care that the Saints got Derek Carr. The thing about this is what we need to do, we need to give this guy hell for the next four years. So this goes back to what I'm saying. We need somebody to get to the quarterback. Evan Kenton can get to the quarterback. Troy Anderson can get to the quarterback. We just haven't been able to do it at a high level. Grady Jarrett, you already know what he can do. The more people that can get after him, the better. And it's not just him. There's all been, there's been rumblings that Aaron Rodgers is probably going to be with the Panthers. I don't believe that, but whoever their quarterback is, we need to get at the quarterback. We don't have a necessarily we don't necessarily have a mobile quarterback in this uh in this division. I mean, you can you can say Taysom Hill, you know, but with Derek Carr on the roster, Taysom Hill will probably still get some burn, but he's not going to be the primary guy. Obviously, um, you also have Kyle Trask at in, at the Buccaneers. Um, I don't know he's very unproven, but I don't never remember him running, you know, out of the pocket to do anything. Nevertheless, we need to get some guys that can get after these people, you know. So I don't care who that quarterback is. It's all negated if you can get a, a fierce pass rush after these people, you know. So they're our rivals. We want to um, have friendly competition with these guys. But at the same time, we want to win. We want to win this division. We want to go and have a double-digit, you know, season win season we want to go into the playoffs we want to go far in the playoffs and the first thing we need to do is understand our opponent but don't worry about them there's nothing to fear this team that the falcons have is set up for success and people may not want to really look at it but do you realize with the whole situation with calvin ridley he just got reinstated but do you understand what calvin Ridley? what is going on with the falcons they just got a fourth round pick for him i think it was fourth or fifth i think it was fifth I can't remember. I think it was the fifth round pick. Nevertheless, you can get some real good value at the fifth round. Look at Tyler Algier. So those picks for 2024 can actually get better if Calvin really performs at a high level level and get re-signed by the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is an excellent, you know, condition, uh, uh, excellent clause in the condition of his um of the trade that the Falcons made. I don't know what uh Terry Fontenot and them were trying to do when he did this, but this is a genius move. He can be as good as a second-round pick. 
I want this kid to get 1,100 yards. I want him to get like 10 touchdowns. I want him to do very good for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Give us that second round pick and we can continue to build this team. You know, so you, you have to understand like, what are we doing with everything that's in the, you know, in the bubble of this, uh, you know, of this, you know, franchise. You also have to understand that other rivals that we do have, the 49ers are somewhat of an Atlanta Falcons rival. It's been one-sided in the 90s, but it is considered somewhat of a rivalry. We beat them last year. We have to understand that that team, the way they played, is a high standard level of football. We want to do what they do. Kyle Shanahan runs the ball very well. We run the ball very well. You know, you know they like to throw the ball every now and then. They have a wide receiver playing running back sometimes. We do the same thing with Cordell Patterson. You know, so we we have like a very similar makeup of what they do. We acknowledge what they do, but trust and believe we damn sure don't fear them. We beat them with Marcus Mariota. You know, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I want people to understand that what we're doing with the Falcons is nothing um, dramatic. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing that is, uh, you know, it's nothing really negative. A lot of a lot of our fan base try to find things that are negative that, that the Falcons are doing, and I get it because of the fact that we've been struggling so long. But after two seven and ten seasons, I think we're going to be right where we need to be, especially with the makeup of the salary cap and the draft picks that we have. We're going to be able to have the other teams in our division definitely give us some respect. You have to understand that. When you're looking at, uh, you know, what the Falcons were capable of doing the first year Arthur Smith was here. Arthur Smith was basically, you know, you know, without receivers, basically. You know, I mean, Calvin Ridley was, you know, he did his thing. He did all right. You know, Kyle Pitts was, you know, he did his thing. He had a thousand yard season. But Matt Ryan didn't have many people to throw the ball to, really. And that second year, it kind of flipped. We got some receivers. But you saw a quarterback situation with Mariota and Ritter came in later and did some did some things, but we're, we're still going to need a quarterback. We're going to need two of them at least. And I don't know where we're going to pick the quarterback side, but I, I'm still a firm believer of building around Desmond Ritter, but I'm still going to ride with or whatever else they're going to, you know, whatever we go with. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm just not a fan of breaking the bank. I mean, there's not just a quarterback. I'm just not a fan of breaking the bank on one player on a football team that can give that can take up I mean, 30, 40, in some cases, 50 percent of your salary. I mean, I think that's kind of wild, even though that quarterback may be extremely talented and very good. I'm just not a fan of it. And I know people who've been going after me to ask, telling me that this is the way to go. We just got to agree to disagree. I'm not saying that we can't win. I'm not saying that it's a completely bad idea. It's just something that I wouldn't do. It's just something that I wouldn't roll with. But nevertheless, if a Lamar Jackson does come available and we give up two first rounders, I mean, it, in the scheme of things, it's a steal. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's an absolute steal. But the money behind it isn't worth it. But you have to understand that look at the money that you're going along with getting, you know, this player. You know, he's going with a lot of money. You know, does that, you know, giving up 40% of your cap, even if you do move some money around, you're going to have to pay the piper at some point. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. You look at Derek Carr, his contract, four, year for, four years for 150. That's very, that, that's not even in the stratosphere of what, you know, not even in the stratosphere of what some of these top-notch quarterbacks want. It's not even near what Lamar Jackson wants. You gotta understand, Lamar Jackson wants a whole other two hundred. I'm not another two hundred. He wants another hundred million dollars, and he wants it guaranteed. Allegedly, you know that's what they're saying that he wants it guaranteed. So when you get that on top of a five year deal, you know it. it you know you're, you're stretching out more money that's going to be paid to one player. You know I think if you divide the four years. But Derek Carr, what you're looking at, a little bit less than 30 million, less than 20 million, you know, I mean, less than, yeah, a little bit less than 30 million or something like that. Because if you do three times five, you know, 
you know, that's 15, that's, so that's 150, so 30 million, you do it for four years, you probably look at it less than 30 million. I mean, that, I mean, that's very well, I mean, if I can get it, if we can get Lamar Jackson for that price, I'm all in, because you're going to still have a lot more money, you're going to have another hundred million dollars based on what is said that Lamar Jackson wants, you're going to have another hundred million dollars to, to actually get other players. So I'm, I'm all for that. When we start getting that 250, start getting a little bit higher, or whatever the case may be, then you're going to start thinking like, uh, I don't know. It's maybe something we may need to, you know, reevaluate. So the Derek Carr situation is actually very friendly in the scheme of, you know, the price of a, of a quarterback. You know, I mean, you, you're looking at, look, case in point, Daniel, Daniel Jones want 45 to 48 million a year. That, that's insane. Geno Smith just got a three-year deal for 105. And, I mean, what that breaks down to about 33 million. So, you know, you're looking, you're looking at any, those are very good prices for a quarterback in the scheme of things compared to you doing five years for 250. I mean, now you're looking at $50 million for, you know what I'm saying? You're looking at almost $20 million more a year where you can get maybe three or four good players in that position if you with that 20 million, you know what I mean? So you have to understand like the salary cap situation is what it is. You can manipulate it, but you're going to have to pay the piper. Actually, the whole situation with Thomas Dimitrov, we dealt with that. Desmond Trufant, his contract just got off the books. You know, Julio Jones, just got Matt Ryan. You know, you had a lot of players that some of them didn't even play for us anymore. You had to pay the piper for that. I don't want it to be a situation you pay somebody it is, and you gotta also understand. There's no guarantee that any of this will play out. There's no guarantee that Derek Carr is gonna ball out. That could be more money that they have to eat. Even though I said it's a friendly contract, but when you look at it from the scheme of quarterbacks this year, it is a friendly quarter uh, or in the market. It is a friendly quarter um, uh, contract. But does he live up to that thirty million? You know, does he? Not if we get players to get after him. Let's get after him. And, 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 and take him down and, and give him hell for the next four years. At least against us, he's not going to be making that money. He's going to have to work for it. So at the end of the day, we're on the right track. You acknowledge the people, the people in your division. You acknowledge what you know the 49ers are doing. You acknowledge the other teams in the NFC, the Eagles. You know, they look pretty good. Things that are the things that are moving and shaking with Seattle. Seattle is still pretty prominent. Even though we did beat them this year, they're, they're last year, they're still prominent. You know, you look at these other teams in the NFC that could be moving and shaking. You don't know what the Packers are going to look like. You know, we don't know what the Panthers are going to look like. You know, what Eric Bieniemy going to do at Washington. You know, so, you know, what Tampa Bay is going to look like. What are the NFC teams that are a threat? I mean, we already know what the Eagles are going to do. They look like they're, they're going to re- they're going to reload, you know. But with us, we're in a really good position. Terry Fontenot and, and Coach Arthur Smith has us in a pretty good position. We just need to execute and make it happen. So let me know what you guys think. If you like this commentary, the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys for putting up with the audio. I know it's it probably sounds crazy in here. I'm going to try to get it more closed in so I can have more sound bars, I mean sound panels in here. I got some coming later on this week. Probably going to order some more at the end of the week. So I have like some behind me, some over here, because this room is not like the last room I was in last time. It's kind of weird, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble, Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts. I'm going to get out of here. I got to get to work tomorrow. Um, My new job, I'm loving that as well. Everything's just going pretty smooth, and I I cannot complain. And um, hopefully you guys are doing the same. Hopefully you guys can't complain either. And I will see you guys on Wednesday. Well, what I'm saying, Wednesday. I don't do the show like that anymore. (laughs) So I'll see you guys on the next one. Uh, You guys take it easy and you guys be blessed. Peace.